My philosophy of life is uh, you should try everything. So you had three children, five, seven, and nine. Right. And you picked up and moved over seas to Hong Kong. Right. And then you lived there for 11 years, right? Correct. Right? So. Yeah, and I thought it was going to be a nice teapot, but it only takes like a cup of water. Yeah. Well, that is the fun part of pottery is experimenting, yeah. isn't it? What's up, guys? I'm John the Potter. Welcome back to another pottery video. That's my grandpa that you just saw, and I am super excited to share this video with you. My grandpa was a potter in Hong Kong. He moved to Hong Kong when he had three young kids. They lived there. My dad basically grew up in Hong Kong. And he has a super unique story. He has been a big inspiration for me and continues to be. Uh, so I really wanted to sit down with him and just like get his story, get his pottery story, have him talk about his pottery and share that with you guys. So I think this is a really special interview. It's a long one, but there's like so much good stuff. So without further ado, here it is. Here's the interview. We are rolling. This is my grandpa, Walt Schmidt. And today we're just gonna have a conversation about pottery because I was not the first potter in my family. My grandpa was a potter, my dad kind of dabbled in some pottery as well. And so I just wanted to sit down and talk with you about your pottery adventures and how you got into pottery. Sounds great, let's do it. So why don't you just start by telling me how you got into pottery, like when you first started. It was in the mid 70s. I was in Hong Kong teaching, I was assumed I had my boss wanted me to do a particular thing that took up a lot of time which was to head up basketball and uh, he said no that's not your responsibility but I need you to do this whatever it was if you want me to do that then I won't I'm not going to do the basketball anymore so I really had a lot of time on my hands and I like to do things with my hands I went to the high school pottery shop and started working on the wheel and pudging and coiling and slab work. Slab work. And I got pretty good at it. And matter of fact, I started teaching the evening class to adults. And uh, my interest was so great that uh, our son was going to go to Japan for a basketball tournament and I said, well, I'll go along with you. Is that my dad or is that my yeah, uncle? No, it's your uncle. Okay. And uh, so I went to Soji Hamada's uh, studio. Very famous. Very Potter. famous. First he, uh, national treasure in Japan is mm -hmm. what he is. And uh, he and What's the guy from um, England? Bernard Leach. Bernard Leach. He and Bernard Leach, although they didn't speak their language of the opposite person, uh, they did, were able to communicate techniques and uh, slips and glazes and so forth. So that really inspired me a lot. And now, you know, I'm, we'll be 83 in a couple weeks, and then I, I can't center it anymore. I don't have the strength to, to center it in order to throw a pot. Uh -huh. So my, my business is what you see in front of you. So these are some examples of some of the pots that my grandpa made over the years. Um, so that, so when you were started getting in pottery, was that in Hong Kong? Yes. And so, can you just give a quick, like, how did you get to Hong Kong? Like, why were you in Hong Kong, and how did that happen? I always wanted to go overseas. We had a friend who was in the State Department, and I shared that with him. And, he, and I said, we're really, my wife had a, we were in an automobile accident, and she broke her back, and we needed to go to a warm climate. And he said, you ought to think about Hong Kong International School, because it's run by the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate and that's where I was my whole life uh -huh. teaching and uh, so I applied for a job uh, sports master and athletic director and got it wow so so you were how old were you when you moved over to overseas well our children were five seven and nine so you had three children five seven and nine right 
and you picked up and moved over seas to Hong Kong. Right. And then you lived there for 11 years, right? Correct. So nine years at the international school, Hong Kong International School, and then two years as missionary to the Vietnamese refugees. Wow. When you started doing pottery, well, why don't you talk about some of these pieces that, that you made? Like, so this piece, for example, is one of the most unique teapots that you'll ever see, and I'll put some pictures in of it. And I actually made the same teapot in college as after I had seen my grandpa's, and so I'll put some pictures of the one that I made in there too. Um, but how? Talk about this teapot a little bit. How much? How did you get the the idea to make this? Or did you see it somewhere? No. 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 So I... this this is like a donut, right? And it's right. hollow, and this is hollow. So it's, you know, the liquid can go all in throughout here. I don't even really know how it works. It's more as of a decoration, right? Yeah, and I thought it was going to be a nice teapot, but it only takes like a cup of water. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it was fun doing. I, what I did, I, I actually made two um, cylinders. Yep. Because the one that's on the bottom and this one here on the top. And then I, what I cut off from here, I also used as the... Okay, yep. So that was uh, an experiment and it was, I enjoyed doing it. it. I proved that I could do it. Yeah, no, it's, it's really cool. So mine actually was in, a, in a, a magazine that I submitted a picture of my piece <clears throat> that I made like this and Eckes Davis. And so that was actually a really cool thing. So I made one that was inspired by you. Um, how about this teapot? That is kind of an interesting piece. I've got pudging, I've got coiling, I've got slabs, and um, a number of the pieces that you are that are round are cookie um, mold from Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and uh, all of the other were pudged also, going around the top. These these things and. This was uh, also a, a wooden mold that I got in there. So I was able to use all three methods, the pudging, the coil, and the slab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like a super unique piece. Well, I started with, uh, with the coils. Mm -hmm. I made the coils, and then after I got up so far, then I smoothed the inside of it. Mm -hmm. I made the, the lamp also. Oh, this lamp, the base of this lamp too. So that's, that's cool. So did you prefer wheel throwing versus sculpture or, I mean, a lot of these are more sculptural, the slabs and the coil. What did you, what did you prefer? I enjoyed throwing pots. Mm -hmm. That was a fun thing, starting with a glob and coming up with something beautiful or mm -hmm. hopefully it was beautiful. This, I was inspired by when I went to Soji Hamada's place in, in Japan and um, I saw the shape and I thought that's really a beautiful shape so I kind of copied it a little bit mm -hmm. and I used celadon which was a, a glaze that was started by the, the um, Koreans and then the Japanese copied it and then the um, Chinese were kind of mastered it and they really put out mm -hmm. lots of celadon mm -hmm. today. And, and this is something that it's, it says butter on it, on that side. And it says butter on that side. And I think you made that in I made, my studio. I did. At my parents' house. Yeah. And, so uh, it serves, serves a, a quarter pound of, of butter, and uh, it's a, I think you kind of unique. Yeah, I'll have to do a how to make butter dishes. That uh, that was an idea that my grandpa had that I think he's still disappointed that I haven't <laughs> done and made. A, haven't made your million. My in million doing dollars. That. Uh, maybe someday in butter dishes. I don't know if there's that much butter. You know, people like covered butter dishes too. I uh, I've had a lot of people ask for that. So what do you think? What do you think drew you to pottery? Or what do you think was the reason that that was an art that you really were drawn to? I did marquetry. I've done gourd art, 
Some of it you can see on the back there. Yeah, let's just talk about the gourds first. This is like a, a gourd that my grandpa did. Like I don't even know how, like so you burn lines into it. <clears throat> Burn it first and then you paint it with leather dye. This one is very interesting. What I normally do, I have a drill a press. Drill, drill press, yeah. Drill press, okay. I use the drill press in order to clean the inside. I got a, um, a metal like um, brush mm -hmm. and then I cleaned it. Let me, <clears throat> and that cleans the inside of this thing. And after I finished, I put it behind me and I was doing another one. And all of a sudden I knocked it over and it cracked down this way. And I thought, oh my, what are we going to do? So I glued it and then why don't you get the other one that's over there? Yeah, that one is intricately carved. And the pieces that I cut out of here is what's on here. Ah. And I duplicated it so it was on both sides. Yeah, cool. So, but I, that fascinates me to be able to manipulate and mm -hmm. do things with my hands. Mm -hmm. So when, when you guys moved back to the States, did you do much pottery after that? Uh, <clears throat> I was a director of a camp, Camp uh, Pioneer mm -hmm. in western New York near uh, Buffalo and somebody asked me the same thing. He said, I, I know you were, and he was in Hong Kong and saw stuff that I was putting out. Mm -hmm. And he said, you, you've been doing anything in pottery? I said, no, I don't have a, a kill and so forth. Well, he goes out and buys a kill for yeah. me. <laughs> And so what we did, we made plaques, family plaques that were probably, oh, six inches by four inches or so. Mm -hmm. And each family would make uh, some kind of a design on it with their name. Mm -hmm. And we hung those all around the dining room, all, all around. Yeah. And uh, that was really the only thing that we've done. And so he just bought a kiln just to do that project, basically. Yeah. Well, I didn't buy it. He bought yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the high school was giving or giving away our very cheap wheels, mm -hmm. electric wheels. So I bought them, both of them. And uh, on Sundays, we always had a large group of people that would come couple hundred people would come on Sundays for picnics at mm -hmm. the camp and I would sit out there and I'd be throwing pots cool. and then let other people who wanted to try to do it themselves I'd help them a little bit and uh -huh. so forth so that was always a fun thing to do. Hmm. So did you ever sell any of your pottery anywhere or was it mostly just you gave away what you made? Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there any like tips or tricks or techniques that you used to use or did use that you can remember that you that you thought were useful in pottery? I know you've told me one a couple times about using paper over the lip, mm -hmm. you know, and I've tried doing that and, and I have done that some and I know other people do that trick, like things like that. Are there anything that you did? I think what I enjoyed doing in this, I used I forget what the color, the name of the blue is. It's cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. And the outer part is washed off. I put it on and then I wiped it all off, yeah. except for the stuff that was in the cracks. And yep. that really makes it stand out. I do that a lot now. All those pine tree ones that I do, and like, every, I do that a lot now. Pretty much almost every mug I have just has some sort of that stuff on it. I just came from the dentist, so. <laughs> I'm talking kind of funny and my tongue is getting in the way of everything, so pardon me. No, for that's that. okay. That's okay. I'd say just just try and experiment and you might find something that you like. This thing is uh, again 76. I guess I was trying to make like a, dra a gravy boat. Flying birds were in a, uh, a woodcut that I pressed clay in mm -hmm. and then just use some slip and put it on. Yeah, I've had a couple people ask me those 
Those lettering stamps are that I use for whenever I write anything in the clay. Those are actually stamps that I got from you. Right. And I've had people ask like, oh, those are so, those look so good, they're so clean. Like, where'd you get those? And I'm like, sorry, I, my grandpa gave them to me and I think he got them in Hong Kong or right. China or I don't know where right. you got them. Hong Kong, but they, I'm sure they're a product of China. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, those are still repurposed. And I, actually that gave me a whole new set of when I took those stamps from you and started using them. Like, that just kind of opened up a whole new world of custom things because then you can write anything, yeah. you know, in mugs and, and do it. So that was a, a cool thing. Do you have a favorite piece that you've made out of all this stuff? This piece. This, this piece is your favorite one? Right. I, I think it's so unique as far as the shape is concerned mm -hmm. and also the color. Mm -hmm. How long did you actually teach pottery? I think I taught all, all the time I was there uh, from like the mid 70s to 81. Okay. Probably six years. Okay. Is when I taught. Yeah. Something that's really cool that I know that you did that I, I used to do, but I don't do it anymore just because there's too many, is you put the date on all of your pots. So it's 77, is a lot of them I saw. Um, uh, that's cool. So you're, so my dad did a little pottery too. Do you just want to talk quick about, like, did you get your kids into doing pottery? Like, when did, did Dave or Christine? and my dad all do them? My philosophy of life is to, you should try everything. Now, I got rebuffed by my kids often for making them do something. And, uh, but I felt it was important for them to learn to do it. I had three children and I, was teaching sailing in Hong Kong and <clears throat> I wanted all three kids to know how to sail and how to do it. Only two of them went the whole way and got cert certified mm -hmm. that they could then teach also. Mm -hmm. One chose never to do it and that same one fought me like crazy when I took them to play golf in the new territories. But yet he, he's the golfer today. <laughs> so um, I told Christine I was going to pick her up and drive her home. Yeah. From Christine's my aunt, your daughter. Right. From school when we were in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. And I completely forgot about it. <laughs> completely. And I was, when she finally got home, she was irate uh -huh. that I didn't, she had to go home by bus and so forth. So I said, Christine, I'm sorry. And to show how sorry I am, you can have any one of my pots that I have. <laughs> and she chose this one. So how old was she at this point? High school. High school? Okay. Mm. And so she still has this one today. She yeah. dropped it off today right. just so that we could have it in the video. Right. So that's cool. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Grandpa. I really appreciate sitting okay. down. And uh, that was a lot of fun. I'll look forward to seeing it on John the Potter. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That was it. Big shout out to my grandpa for sitting down with me and sharing his story on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much, Grandpa Schmidt and Grandma. We are, she was there too, watching in the background. And can't say thanks enough. I love you guys. And drop me a comment in the box. Tell me what you thought of this interview style video. And maybe we'll do more in the future. Maybe we'll sit down with other potters, other artists, get their take on you know, their art and how they make a living. This is my grandpa's story, and I have it now forever. It's on video, so how special is that? If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment below, check out the Patreon page, hit the bell button, all the things. We'll see you in the next video.